Now at 11, chaos on college campuses across the country tonight. Dozens arrested at Columbia University in New York while tensions increase at UCLA and USC. Good evening, I'm Micah Ullman. And I'm Cher Calvin. College campuses in crisis as protesters and police face off amid escalating tensions. The battle between free speech and safety concerns now reaching a fever pitch. At Columbia University in New York, police officers in riot gear entered a campus building arrest dozens of protesters and back here at home at UCLA and USC clashes have broken out between pro-Palestinian and pro-Israeli demonstrators prompting increased security and threats of disciplinary action. We have team coverage of the student protests and the response by schools and the police. Sandra Mitchell is standing by live but we begin with John Finolio live at UCLA. John. Yeah, Sharon, Micah, uh, right now, uh, this is a very tense situation. Uh, demonstrators on the uh, pro-Israeli protesters just now started dismantling the encampment here, the pro-Palestinian encampment. It was about 10 minutes ago, and um, mostly men wearing masks came running up, overwhelmed security, and began pulling back the metal barricades that you can see right here. They've been trying to pull down some of the makeshift plywood that has also been used to set up this pro-Palestinian encampment. The security who have been surrounding this encampment, you can see some of these people right here, they're carrying the um, Israeli flag. Much, of, Many of them are wearing hoodies. And look at this guy right here in the white mask. See this guy right here in the white mask? Many of them came running up wearing masks looking just like this one. Uh, kind of a frightening scene to be honest with you. Well, they all ran up, they began pulling out these barricades and now they're actively trying to dismantle the makeshift wood that is uh, surrounding this pro-Palestinian. And now if you look over to our right, we see pepper spray. I don't know if that's police or protesters, but someone is spraying pepper spray. More people are running out of the encampment now. That definitely looks like bear spray. It looks like a bear spray canister. They are spraying each other. And you can see that as this crowd gets more agitated, as these little skirmishes break out, this crowd gets more agitated. And that group that we saw walking away a minute ago now appears to be running back up. Campus police are nowhere in sight at this moment, but we can tell you that if you look across at the Palestinian side, the pro-Palestinian side, you can see that some of these demonstrators, they have opened up umbrellas, essentially trying to prevent any of that bear spray from getting on them. Uh, meantime, others are trying to put some of these barricades back in place. But again, security retreated when all of this happened. These are unarmed security officers. Someone just threw some sort of explosive or firework. Uh, Okay, just a firework. You All right, uh, this is definitely this is definitely getting kind of out of hand. The police are nowhere in sight. We want to show you what happened just a short moment ago. Take a look at this video. In this video, you can see the protesters dismantling uh, some of those barricades right there. Again, that was taken right as all of this was happening. Again, pro. Israeli demonstrators now attempting to dismantle the pro-Palestinian encampment here at UCLA between Royce Hall and Powell Library. It has become chaotic, it has become tense, and police are nowhere on site. It was calm most of the day, but tonight the situation has escalated dramatically. Here's what it looked like earlier today. Tonight, the pro-Palestinian encampment that has overtaken Dixon Plaza at UCLA is spreading. Demonstrators now occupying portions of the steps and sidewalks of Powell Library and Royce Hall. More unarmed security also on hand to separate encampment dwellers from a smaller but vocal group of pro-Israeli counter-protesters. Heated at times, but peaceful most of the day. Luke Veltz was attempting to donate drinks and snacks to those in the encampment. He's not a UCLA student, but supports calls for the university to divest from Israel, an end to the war, and a free Palestinian state. When, you know, you've had a genocide carry on for this long, people are just not going to be able to live side by side with two governments um, in, in the way that it's been suggested. And I think that a free Palestine is the only way forward. Pro-Israeli counter-protesters calling for the release of Israeli hostages taken captive by Hamas on October 7th. I think this is like blatant anti-Semitism. This is uh, 
crazy what's going on, what they're letting going on. They're chanting to kill us, they're chanting to, from the river to the sea, which is like just blatantly f to kill us all. So I don't know, I wanted to see what's going on and it's like it's scary. <laughs> Tuesday morning, protesters chanted, let him go, as a demonstrator carrying a Palestinian flag was arrested for climbing the scaffolding of a building above the encampment. He was released a short time later. Vandals also sprayed graffiti on the doors of Royce Hall. Overnight, campus police broke up several fights after a group of about 60 pro-Israeli protesters tried to push through the encampment's barricade. School officials ultimately deciding to close Royce Hall through Friday and Powell Library until Monday. Meantime, at USC, the main commencement ceremony remains canceled. However, 47 smaller commencement ceremonies will take place across campus. University President Carol Folt issuing a statement saying USC remains committed to free speech and peaceful protests while ensuring public safety. Safety, adding that she is in direct talks with representatives from the pro-Palestinian group Divest from Death USC, which has established an encampment in Alumni Park. The same park became the scene of chaos last Wednesday after the university called on LAPD to forcibly remove demonstrators. That was John Fidelio reporting from UCLA. All right, we're going to go back now live to the campus of UCLA where John Finolio is reporting as tensions are escalating tonight. And John, we understand that police have moved in as the clashes between the protesters there have uh, have broken out. What's going on, John? Sure, and Mike, I can tell you police are in fact not on scene. We thought we saw uniformed officers, but in fact, these were agitators. They were people dressed in dark clothing that look like they're almost wearing vests or tactical belts, many of them wearing white masks over their face. I would say that there is about a hundred or so of these agitators. They are um, outside of the pro-Palestinian encampment. Some of them are waving Israeli flags, but most of them are just dressed in dark clothing. And as you can see, they are actually trying to dismantle the pro-Palestinian encampment right now. We saw just a moment ago as we were standing up closer to the barricade, someone threw a, a very large firework and exploded against the barricade. And then someone began firing mortar-like fireworks uh, into the encampment itself. Now, we've got a uh, police helicopter overhead, and I can tell you that the security that was surrounding this encampment that essentially was keeping these two groups separated, pro-Israeli demonstrators and pro-Palestinian demonstrators, keeping them separate uh, with, with a berth of about five feet between metal barricades and then, of course, the makeshift wood planks that are surrounding the encampment. Those security officers retreated. They're unarmed. And as these metal barricades began uh, being pulled away and thrown at the security officers, they essentially ran and took cover. And so it became uh, a struggle between people behind the makeshift wood planks who were inside the encampment and the people here who are now trying to tear it down and dismantle it. Also, right before uh, we went to air, we saw someone with what looked like a bear spray canister get into a fight and spray several other people. That prompted the pro-Palestinian demonstrators to open umbrellas to prevent any more people on their side of the of the fence essentially from, from being sprayed. And right now, the crowd here in the quad outside of Royce Hall continues to swell, continues to grow. And what we're seeing basically is just a lot of unrest as tensions continue to flare here on the campus of UCLA. Share Micah. So you're describing a very difficult and challenging situation for the university tonight, John. Uh, initially describing some 100 people, uh, and now it appears the crowd continues to grow. And again, uh, no law enforcement in sight. Uh, you described security guards, unarmed security guards, retreating and taking cover. Uh, and we saw a moment ago, John, uh, physical violence break out there on the lawn. That's absolutely right, Michael. We saw physical violence break out. We also saw um, uh, fireworks being launched, like you'd see in a fireworks show, being launched from a mortar into the encampment, exploding over the encampment. In one case, uh, one of those mortars landed right outside one of those wood plan planks and exploded. Uh, such a loud boom that you know you can feel the thud in your chest, just like you do when you see a fireworks show. But of course, this is anything but celebratory. These are people on one side of this very contentious issue, firing these mortar fireworks 
into this encampment right now. It is dangerous, it is lawless, it is very tense, and again, police are not on scene, notably not on scene right now, uh, as these agitators outside of the encampment uh, continue to spar with those who are refusing to leave the quad area between Powell Library and Royce Hall here on the campus of UCLA. Now, John, the intent here, was to dismantle the uh, pan Palestinian, uh, pro-Palestinian protesters encampment, um, not only with uh, throwing that that uh, firework at them, but also um, with the video that you showed us prior to that, uh, they were trying to dismantle it. Were they successful at doing so? Yeah, so they did have uh, several rows of barricades lined up, these metal, metal barricades that were outside the wood planks that surround the encampment. And now security here at school put those in place because essentially these skirmishes were just getting too tense. So they said, we're gonna put a line of unarmed security guards along with the two rows of metal barricades between the encampment and pro-Israeli demonstrators. And that has been effective most of the day. But a large group of mostly men in dark clothing wearing in some cases what looked like vests and tactical belts um, overwhelmed them, began pulling the barricades away, and in some cases throwing them at the security guards. We caught that on video. Uh, we also saw some of the people coming out of the encampment to try and pull those uh, barricades back and, and, and essentially uh, stay right where they are. The, the reality though is even if this group of people who are out here right now really stirring the pot, really agitating the whole situation, even if this group out here um, does manage to get inside that encampment, they will be overwhelmed. They certainly are, there are just not enough of them. Uh, and I can tell you, police have just now started to arrive, or it appears that they are arriving. We see two police cruisers and an ambulance. Um, one would think that they would be coming right here given all of this uh, unrest, this flash of unrest that we just saw unfold with our very eyes as part of it while we're on live television right here. Uh, yep, it looks like those police vehicles are coming here right now. If photojournalist Jeff Armstrong can pan the camera to the right, you can see the police car coming up the road right here. Uh, one would think that they would be uh, prepared for something like this given all the unrest that's been happening. Um, we don't know if they're going to be in the right gear or if they're just coming essentially to try to break up this crowd. But right now, two police cars, one ambulance, and they certainly uh, will have their work cut out for them tonight because there are a lot of people on this lawn, um, a lot of agitators, a lot of agitators on, on both sides uh, of this situation. But I can tell you what precipitated the violence the chaos just a few moments ago where people on the other side of this encampment, some of them waving Israeli flags, most all of them wearing dark clothing and masks, simply attacking the barricades, pulling them off and sending security running. Share Micah. But as you describe it, John, and we've seen this from aerials throughout the day uh, and in days past there, the pro-Palestinian encampment, we see dozens and dozens of tents. So you imagine uh, the sheer size uh, of that group there. Uh, if uh, this were to escalate, uh, they would outweigh those who are, are trying to tear down their encampment uh, by, by large numbers. Absolutely. They would be absolutely outnumbered by the number of people who are inside uh, behind the barricade, behind the uh, encampment there, the pro-Palestinian demonstrators. They, there are simply too many, uh, there are simply too many of them uh, in order to, uh, you know, and there are too many of them that would simply overwhelm any of these what seem to be pro-Israeli uh, demonstrators right now. John, um, it looks like we just we have uh, one crowd. person that was injured uh, that was being brought over that over yeah. to the ambulance there, the, uh, this to the is EMS someone, van. Correct, someone who, was, someone who was sprayed in the face, it appears, with that bear spray. They're putting some stuff in his eyes right now. Um, that, we are assuming that that is one of the, pers one of the people who was sprayed just now. Um, you saw that skirmish uh, unfold right before we went to our full report, our oh pre-recorded package. Um, uh, they are putting stuff in his eyes right now. Jeff, can you pan the camera to the left? You can see them working on this guy on the ground here. 
And they are now chanting, shut it down, referring to the encampment, shut down the encampment. I can tell you that while there, of course, are a lot of student demonstrators here, many of these people tonight, and we know this because we've been speaking with many of them, and we just, we ask them pointedly, are you a student? And many of them tell us they are not. See these guys in the mask right here? Jeff, can you pan over right here? See these guys, black mask, white mask? That is what the majority of these folks looked like when they ran when they ran towards the encampment and began tearing down the barricades. They are concealing their faces. People on the other side of the encampment also concealing their faces too, but uh, these are the guys who uh, rushed the area this evening and began uh, dismantling it, uh, doing so forcefully. Share, Micah. And you've got what, what appears to be an impasse at this point. Uh, we, we had initially dozens of people, and there's someone there that appears to have been uh, hit with that bear spray. Can you talk to us? What, hap what, what happened to you? Can you talk? Can you see? All right, we tried, we tried to ask the man what happened to him. Yeah. I can yeah. understand why and he might right want now, to and try and, and right find now, yeah, of course, of course, of course. And mm -hmm. right now, police are trying to get these guys to back up, and it's getting very heated. Um, They're probably going to need to call some backup. Not, I mean, uh, you know, this is a, a group there are of not mostly men. It here. looks like here, uh, yeah. And and you're, it looks you're, what we saw looks like just one police uh, cruiser that came in. Is that right? And this is the guy with the pepper yeah, we've with got, the bear spray. Yeah, we've got three police cars. It looks like a total of uh, one, two, three, four. I'm only seeing. Four I'm only seeing four police officers and then, and then plus the, the medics here. Uh, that doesn't mean that there aren't more um, and certainly aren't more on their way, but uh, that's what we've got right now. They've got their batons out and uh, they are just trying to keep people back. Uh, but there are a lot of very worked up, very agitated people here on campus um, who are, and we apologize for the profanity and the obscenities because this is live television and of course such a contentious issue that's unfolding as we speak but you've got a lot of emotion a lot of anger and and in some cases violence that is unfolding uh, as these two sides um, really spar over the unfolding and continuing war in gaza sure micah yeah and we saw fireworks uh, being set off here uh, in the area just a few moments ago uh, which can be frightening they were they were essentially aimed and there you see on screen right that's video from just a short time ago that is uh, the, the the side of the pro-palestinian uh, encampment there where that firework was set off and then another one uh, so you know a very dangerous situation obviously frightening and as the crowd continues to swell uh, things uh, become more frightening and more tense. We saw at least one person uh, a few moments ago who was actually physically assaulted. It looked like at least one person uh, who was essentially being attacked by three, four, maybe five other men. Uh, it, it lasted for a, a brief few seconds and, and then broke apart. But uh, in terms of violence, yes, we're seeing that here tonight uh, on the campus of UCLA, uh, as well as efforts to dismantle this pro-Palestinian encampment that has continued to grow for several days now. Uh, and by now, certainly you've seen the images on television uh, of a, a number of tents, a number of people uh, in this encampment, uh, and they're making their presence known, obviously. Uh, but, but a situation that has continued to intensify here late into the night. We had seen uh, a, a number of security guards, albeit unarmed security, in the area. But as tensions began to flare here a short Mike, time ago... Mike, I don't ago, know if you can still hear me, but it's yeah. notable... Go ahead, John. I don't know if you can still... Sorry, I don't know if you can still hear me. Um, our ear piece keeps going in and out. Notably, the police are leaving just as quickly as they came. Uh, you saw just a minute ago here in our live shot, uh, we had a lot of police cars with the lights flashing, cops out with their batons in hand. And right now, these cop cars have all left. There is one that is here, but he's trying to pull away. The rest of them have taken off. Um, it, it is a very big difference from what we saw last Wednesday at USC when the public safety called in LAPD to forcibly remove demonstrators, pro-Palestinian demonstrators on campus, remove demonstrators, period, and restore order. This is a much more hands-off situation. So the police cars have left, the ambulance has left. Um, we didn't see anyone transported in the ambulance. We, you saw us try to speak with a gentleman who appeared to have been sprayed, pe 
perhaps with bear spray, pepper spray. Uh, obviously, he did not want to talk to us. Uh, those cop cars, they are out of here, and now uh, this crowd of people is re-entering the quad here uh, in front of the pro-Palestinian encampment, and um, we're just watching and waiting to see what's going to happen next. I, I, it just is very notable that the police are taking a, such a hands-off approach in this current situation. Yeah, it, it, very interesting that that, that, that is the approach, uh, considering what it was just a few days ago. Um, and, uh, you know, now that they have uh, decided to leave campus and you can see also, it seems as if the tensions have also uh, dropped a little bit and masks are coming off, um, at least from that one protester there, um, back on again. Um, but it seems like they're going back into the quad there and uh, it seems that things, tensions might be a little bit calmer. Uh, we'll see, only time will tell, but uh, things were very tense uh, just moments ago. And Micah, you were mentioning that uh, we did witness violence um, with uh, one person being kicked um, on the ground by several men. Um, and, and that was very difficult to watch. Uh, we, we saw, uh, you know, a firework thrown at the pro-Palestinian encampment. And, you know, that was obviously to inflict harm uh, on that group. And, uh, and another firework thrown as well. So th there's been a very intense moments here on the UCLA campus tonight and with uh, with police presence, but no arrests have been made. Um, some injuries that we can that we've been able to see with the bear spray that was sprayed at at the pal pro Palestinian camp uh, encampment, and uh, one man that was visibly struck by that bear spray. Uh, he had his eyes washed out by the EMS there, but uh, it seems like he is going to recover. Yes. Other than that, it looks like oh, here we go again. Mm -hmm. More yeah. tension. And, Can and you guys see the barricades being moved? Yeah, uh, we have seen them, uh, and we continue to see them. And, and uh, again, the unarmed security has left to take cover. Uh, the few LAPD officers that did arrive on scene have since left, uh, clearly outnumbered in a dangerous situation. Law enforcement will uh, approach us, it, it, certainly, when, when they have the manpower uh, and the strategy to manage a situation like this but when you see just a handful of uh, law enforcement showing up when there's more than a hundred people uh, in, in a potentially violent and in, indeed violent situation uh, at times uh, they're going to take appropriate measures to protect themselves as well uh, to, to sky five now over the scene in gil Levis. gil uh, we've seen a bit of violence on the ground here we've seen law enforcement frankly retreat over the last 10 15 minutes or so uh, what can you tell us from your vantage point Micah, we're just arriving here to see what's going on here. We're looking at, I'm showing you the east side of the uh, Solidarity en Encampment. That's where uh, some barriers were put up today. In fact, there was kind of a buffer zone here with that sidewalk. They put a, an additional row of those metal uh, barriers up to uh, keep people away from the actual Solidarity Encampment itself. As I come out to a wide shot, you see the entire, uh, that's the Royce uh, Hall right underneath the the bottom of our screen here to get a, a better idea. We're kind of looking at it from the north and uh, west side of the encampment, but you see a large group uh, away from the uh, Solidarity Encampment here. This is uh, on the east side of it. It looks like they've regrouped over there and have moved away from those barriers, but a few people uh, coming in a little bit tighter. We did see as we were approaching a couple of those police cars leaving the scene a, a couple of blocks away from this scene here, but right now it looks like it's calmed down a little bit here, at least on the east side. Let me take a look on the west side here that's directly under us. That's about the center of the encampment there. It looks like uh, that is... Uh, pretty calm there as well. So at this point, it looks like the majority of the activity here is on the east side of that encampment. Yeah, you can see that the frustrations are, are still growing and, and the people are running back and forth um, here in, in, the, in, uh, in the Roy squad here. Uh, uh, it, it's, it's so intense. It looks like somebody might be hurt and they're, they're trying to move that person. Is that what we're seeing here? Yeah, it looks like from our vantage, it looks like they're carrying somebody there uh, uh, by the legs and uh, by the uh, by the waist there. Uh, they're definitely about about eight people carrying that person away 
that's towards the east, away from the encampment itself. And oh my gosh, some bottles being thrown at those people right now from that group to the right-hand side. So a lot of uh, photographs being taken there as that person is being whisked away that direction. Let me come out wider and see if there's an ambulance. No, it doesn't look like there's one police car. That police car has yeah. been there all day. Yeah, and it may be vacant. I'll uh, sit back here. Yeah, what we're Gu seeing, John, guys, come go to ahead, us. John. So this, this, yeah, someone appears to have been injured and they are carrying them away from the encampment right now. What happened to this person? What happened to him? What happened to What happened to this guy? Okay, well, someone appears to be injured. Someone else is saying that that's not the case, but this person, they're, try, they're saying they're calling for an ambulance. Uh, I'm looking at this gentleman's face and I can tell you, uh, he is a he is alert and he is conscious, but he appears uh, he does appear to have some sort of of injury. We're not sure what happened to him. If he was hit, if he was struck, uh, if if someone uh, perhaps got him with some of that spray, uh, but he does appear to be he does appear to be injured. Um, again, in that general direction where they just carried this man from, um, a, a, another firework was thrown, and uh, we're not sure if maybe he was in the path of that explosion. Uh, when it went off, we just don't know. But um, he is laying on the ground. His eyes are open, and he appears to be breathing. However, uh, they are calling for an ambulance and saying that they need EMS right away. I, uh, again, I reiterate, it's notable that um, when uh, UCLA campus police arrived, uh, they got here, and then they left as quickly as they came. They certainly did not stay very long. Uh, they took off quickly. Um, and uh, the unrest continued. We saw another mortar launched uh, into the direction of the Solidarity encampment. Uh, we saw some more barricades being removed. Um, and, and then we, of course, saw the, of course, we saw this person being uh, carried back right here. Um, the crowd is getting very hostile around us right now. So Cher and Micah, we're gonna toss it back to you for just a moment and we'll reset and we'll get you a better picture here in just a second. All right, uh, John, uh, you uh, get to a safer location. Again, um, live television right now from UCLA and uh, this is what the situation is there. Um, uh, we have been watching the UCLA campus uh, over the last few days and, and the tensions there have just been growing and growing and now uh, about half an hour ago, the tensions between uh, the pro-Palestinian camp and um, and and counter protesters, um, pro-Israelis, uh, went over to the pro-Palestinian encampment and uh, tried to dismantle their camp and then threw a firework at the camp as well. Um, started using bear spray uh, and 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 bear spraying some of the people over there. Um, and then it seems that right now we have somebody that has been injured and in need of uh, emergency care. And uh, they have been, uh, you, these people that you see with their hands up um, are surrounding uh, this person who is on the ground, who is seeking emergency help. Uh, there was EMS and police that were on scene about five, ten minutes ago, but they have left the campus. Um, and so they are seeking for emergency help right now uh, for this individual um, that is on the ground. We do not know what is wrong with this person. Uh, we do know he is alert, um, but uh, he is in need of, of medical attention. Yeah, and as they wait for uh, emergency responders to arrive on scene, it looks as though uh, from from our eyewitness okay, right. uh, observation uh, that this person is stable. Uh, the extent of the injuries, we don't know. We did see uh, violence break out, uh, sort of like pockets of it, uh, violence. We saw uh, four or five people attacking one person. It lasted for maybe 10, 15 seconds, and then everyone retreated. Uh, we have seen bottles thrown. We have seen fireworks aimed at the pro-Palestinian encampment. Uh, and we saw uh, what's being described as roughly 100 people on the lawn there at Ro uh, Royce Quad, 
uh, essentially trying to dismantle the pro-Palestinian encampment, uh, pulling the barriers uh, away from essentially the, the makeshift wall they've built there with, with pallets, wood pallets. Uh, but again, uh, the people that, re that are inside that pro-Palestinian encampment remain there. Uh, and there are quite a few of them, uh, and they outnumber by a great margin uh, the people that have come here uh, and essentially tried to tear down that encampment. Uh, thus far, we've seen this one person suffering from injuries. The extent of the injuries, again, we don't know. Uh, we saw another man who looked as though he had been drenched in bear spray or pepper spray. Uh, he received a bit of uh, attention from medics who were on scene for a very brief period before leaving. Uh, he did not get into the ambulance. He remains on scene. Uh, and as we await uh, a law enforcement presence here, again, we can tell you that the uh, campus security here, unarmed security, retreated and took cover uh, as this uh, tension began to boil over. And that was roughly 20 minutes ago. Uh, officers did eventually arrive, armed officers on scene, although uh, only described as two or three squad cars. They were there for less than five minutes and they as well left the scene. So no security, no law enforcement presence at this point. Uh, and as we look at the live picture from the left of your screen at Sky 5, uh, Gil Levis watching things uh, with a bird's eye view. And, and Gil, are, are you sensing uh, a retreat, a, a, a more calming situation or an intensifying situation? It appears it's a little bit more of a retreat at this point. Uh, I'm going to come back to a wide shot so you get a full perspective of the entire scene here. That's uh, that's uh, Royce Hall there on the on the bottom left hand side of your screen. That's the north side of campus, and uh, some, looks like some fireworks there maybe going off on the ground. So uh, a little bit more activity there at the, on this uh, northeast corner. It looked like it might have been fired into the encampment there. But uh, I'm going to come out to a wide shot and go back to where that person was carried away. This is in the uh, 300 block of Portola Plaza. That person was carried away to that, that sidewalk there. Seems to be down on the ground there, and the people around him are taking care of that person. But as I look out the window of Sky 5, I don't see guy. any uh, police cars or, or lights coming this direction, uh, an ambulance or anything like that. So at this point, that person's uh, condition is unknown right now. And then again, back to the seen here where fireworks just went off in this corner of that uh, solidarity, solidarity encampment here and as I tilt up here these are the counter protesters out in the field to the east so uh, it looks like they've retreated quite a bit from the uh, from the eastern boundary. Okay um, Gil thank you we want to go back over to John Finolio right now John what's the situation like now? Okay, sure, Mike. I've just spoken with one of the organizers from inside the encampment, and they told me that the young man you're looking at here who's lying on the ground, the people surrounding this young man, uh, that he was hit with mace or bear spray, was briefly blinded, and in the process of not being able to see, hit his head. Um, he is alert, he is conscious, and he is breathing, but um, they just say he's, he, he needs an ambulance. He needs EMS right away. Uh, but again, they're saying that this is a result of being sprayed, uh, with bear spray um, or some other kind of irritant, mace perhaps, um, that caused him to uh, be briefly blind, wasn't able to see, and then he fell and hit his head. So that's what we're hearing right now uh, from these folks. Uh, they have called 911, they have called for EMS, uh, and so that's what we're waiting for right now. I have to say, and it bears repeating, it is notable that police are not anywhere to be found right now, and you have to wonder, is that intentional given all um, of the tension that has been unfolding, not just here at UCLA, but USC and schools around the country. But it is notable that with this much unrest and lawlessness, police are not here. Uh, the crowd has gotten bigger since we came to air right at the top of the 10 o'clock hour. Um, another firework was just thrown into the encampment. You're about to see an explosion. And there you have it, another firework was just thrown into that encampment. And while this may look relatively harmless because of it's a colorful firework, that is an explosive mortar that if that lands on somebody or on one of these tents, it's going to kill them or could potentially kill them. So this is a very dangerous situation right now. Um, and now people are, some people are starting to run uh, from the scene. Some of them, all of them wearing masks, in fact. So one has to wonder if those uh, are the people who are uh, perpetrating this violence against uh, the protesters on, in the solidarity encampment. Um, regardless of, of which side of this debate one may fall on, uh, 
regardless of who they support, what is clear tonight is that people from outside of the encampment came onto the lawn tonight uh, to create chaos and to cause violence. And, and they did so and continue to do so now. And the people inside the encampment uh, naturally fought back. Uh, and that's sort of what that's sort of what you're seeing right now. Um, and Micah, you asked earlier, does it look like it's calming down? Is it, or is it, you know, escalating? It's hard to say from our vantage point because we can only get our cameras so close uh, without putting ourselves in a bunch of danger. But right now, the crowd kind of appears calm, and then all of a sudden, another mortar, or or uh, will be thrown into the encampment, or you'll see a group of people running, and that's usually an indication um, that obviously. Uh, more violence is being perpetrated here and, and the, the tension still very, very high. What's alarming about the explosives that are being thrown at the encampment is that it is intent to cause harm. And when you th throw these explosives or fireworks, whatever they might be, into the encampment, there is the possibility that these explosives can catch fire on any of these tents and that that can cause a domino effect and light the entire encampment on fire and injure all of those people. Um, and, and that's what's really frightening about that um, scenario. So, you know, you, you just you know, shake your head when you hear that go off uh, of, you know, it's, a, it's intent to cause harm. And, Possibly they could, like you said, die. And people are using umbrellas to protect themselves. Um, as we see again uh, from the left side of your screen, Gil Avis in Sky 5, uh, those are, they appear to be uh, the, the pro-Palestinian uh, encampment folks that are, that are uh, I inside the barrier, Gil? Yes, that's correct, Mike and Sherrod. Definitely those people all along that, that eastern barrier there that was put up earlier uh, definitely are taking shelter there and people behind them for sure. We watched that uh, firework. Uh, it looked like it came from this area. It looked like it may have skipped around on the ground and then landed right about this tent right in here when it went off. I was looking to see if anyone was injured. It didn't look like anyone was coming out of those tents or from that area. People were running into that area where, to check on anybody that was there. But certainly at this point, I don't see anyone scrambling away uh, like we did that one person being carried away but at this point uh, it looks like the uh, counter protesters yeah. here hey guys, have regrouped over there by their uh, area go ahead john uh, all right sorry back to you gil yeah so that's the that's the scene out here the uh, those are the counter protesters there in the center of the screen and the solidarity encampment here. And again, that firework going off right about the center of your screen as I push in here. You can see a couple people walking around checking the area there for anybody that might have been injured. Uh, but it appears at this point no one's being carried away or whisked away uh, that was uh, possibly injured there. But I'm coming out to a fully a full wide shot here to show the western side. The western side of the encampment looks pretty uh, mellow, pretty peaceful at this point. Let me see if these are officers here that uh, uh, that might be some security from the campus. Yeah, it looks like some security there on the west side. They're kind of just watching, uh, uh, looking out towards the east. But so far, out the window of Sky 5, I'm not seeing any uh, lights and sirens coming this way, except for the fire department that pulled up here to treat that person that's over there on uh, on Portola Plaza. And it looks like they may have already transported that person to the uh, rescue ambulance. Yeah, because the, the, the rescue ambulance uh, without a police escort uh, likely would not enter a volatile situation like that. So it appears uh, the, the bulk of, of the unrest is to the east of that encampment there. Uh, we actually have seen and laid eyes for the first time in, in, in a long time uh, on uh, security officers there, the, only on the west western perimeter of this uh, encampment. Again, on the east side there, you see Royce Quad, uh, the lawn area. This is where the violence uh, has uh, been ongoing here now for uh, coming up on an hour. Uh, and you see no sign of any law enforcement or security presence there, uh, only to the west side where it appears calm. Uh, but again, th this uh, situation 
you know, the, the crowd of people has uh, dispersed uh, to a degree, the people that were causing the problems. And there you see moments ago that one firework going off right smack in the middle of that encampment, a very dangerous situation uh, potentially for all inside that encampment. It's frightening to see it, really. Uh, and, and it's not the first one we've seen. We've been watching this now for the better part of 45 minutes, and we've seen uh, upwards of a dozen fireworks go off uh, in and around that encampment. All right, Gil, thank you for those pictures. We'll continue to watch uh, from above in Sky 5. We want to go back on the ground to John Finolio, who's been uh, right there in the middle of it all. John? Sharon, sure, Michael, we've been able to reposition and get a little bit closer. That person that was laying on the ground that um, we were told was uh, sprayed in the face with some sort of irritant and then slipped and hit his head. Um, his friends arrived, uh, looked like with some sort of makeshift backward, and they got him up and, and they've moved him further away uh, from the center of all of this unrest. Um, we, we didn't see exactly where they were able to take him, but we, we think they're trying to get him closer to EMS, um, who, just like police, are, are not on scene, have not uh, entered this protest area, this demonstration area, which has turned hostile here tonight. But we have gotten closer to the encampment here. And you can see in front of us all the umbrellas that are deployed, uh, that are open. Um, and that's because people are trying to prevent um, the uh, agitators here on the other side of the lawn from spraying them with mace or bear spray, anything like that. Um, the crowd does appear to have thinned a little bit, uh, but you can still see that there's uh, a, a lot of people here uh, moving closer and closer to the solidarity encampment there and um, to give you an idea of what some of these guys look like Jeff can you turn the camera 180 to your left and so basically what we're seeing is a lot of people wearing masks some of them wearing flags and they look like these guys right here um, who uh, have been arriving in larger numbers throughout the evening um, and trying to dismantle and, and in some cases successfully dismantle this barricade that is um, set up here in the lawn between Royce Hall and Powell Library at UCLA. Share Micah. So John, those folks with the umbrellas, uh, they are pro-Palestinian protesters uh, and they appear to be behind their barricade? That is correct. And before all of this unfolded, all of this um, chaos erupted. What you would see, though, is before you would even see umbrellas, you would see a row of unarmed security personnel and then another row of metal barricades. But uh, this group of men wearing masks and dark clothing, in many cases hoodies, came running in, pulled those barricades away, threw those barricades uh, at security, um, in some cases just outnumbered them, overwhelmed them, and so they they were forced to, to take cover and, and get out of the way. Uh, and then that's when uh, these, these agitators from outside of the solidarity encampment here began ripping away even more of the barrier, the makeshift wood planks that you see lining uh, the encampment here. Uh, and then as the arrest continued to unfold and bear spray, mace, whatever was used on people, clearly they were prepared because they started opening these umbrellas to essentially keep any of that stuff from being sprayed onto them. And once that began happening, that's when we saw the fireworks being thrown into the crowd uh, who were sleeping here on the pro-Palestinian side. Share Micah. All right, John, we want to go back up to Sky 5. Um, Gil, it looks to me as if the crowd is starting to grow um, on the uh, counter protesters side. Um, is that what we're seeing over here? It looks Yeah, they, they actually moved in again, mm -hmm. moved in a little closer. They have a, one of those metal uh, barriers that they brought in a little closer. They were kind of grooving behind it. So it, is, it appears that they move in like that. Uh, something happens and they, they retreat, regroup, and then they come back in again. So that was, that's how it's looking right now. Here comes a cone, a person throwing a cone right into the group there. But we've seen uh, some sticks, some water being thrown at them, 
and now a, a, a emergency cone that was just thrown at them as well. So a, a wider shot will give you a better perspective of the scene once again. Uh, we moved around a little bit, but there again, the eastern side of the encampment, the people, uh, the pro-Palestinians there behind the rails on their end, and then the uh, the other group here, the counter-protesters, that have moved in a little bit closer and appears to be able to uh, throw objects in there to uh, towards those people. They look to number somewhere in the couple of dozen. Um, I mean, it was north of 100 30 minutes ago. Yeah, it seems to have thinned out. It seems to be less uh, of them there. Let me come out wider and see. They kind of started to move off to the east uh, the, on the top of the screen there. So not as many as we saw when we arrived. Okay. Um, oh, it, I was wondering if maybe they were they were growing in numbers because it looked like there were some that were arriving um, on campus from John Finolio's shot, um, and that was starting to worry me. But uh, I was seeing them uh, seeing them lob some things over to the other side, and I was waiting for an explosion. Didn't see one, um, and that was good uh, at least because that's been happening um, and you just worry about the safety of, of people in general, regardless what side um, you are on. It just doesn't matter. Uh, life is life, right? And um, it's just been worrisome at this hour that this is happening here on U the UCLA campus, um, that they've just been, uh, the violence that's been going on here. Uh, John, if you are with us, um we saw uniformed officers arrive. Uh, we described it. We showed it live. Uh, two or three patrol cars and they left. Those were not LAPD officers. Do uh, you describe them as campus police? Sure, Mike. Uh, uh, that is correct. That was uh, UCLA campus police. Uh, you can see one of those cruisers right here. It's, it's, it's easy to confuse them uh, with LAPD. They're black and white. Uh, they look very similar, but the, the uniforms were the uh, UC campus police. Uh, and, and again, as you just described, Micah, they got out here, um, just uh, several cruisers, got out with their batons. Um, it seemed like they were essentially escorting EMS. And because as soon as the medics left, so did the police, and they uh, have not returned that we can see. No uniformed officers that we can see here on campus tonight. Um, I don't even see any patrolling the, the perimeter. Um, and it's notable because after some of these skirmishes broke out in the past couple of nights, they did increase the number of unarmed security. We did see uniformed officers walking in and around um, this encampment, uh, not arresting anyone, but just checking on things, making their presence known. Um, they are certainly not doing that tonight as all of this unrest unfold. Uh, 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 the unarmed security on the western perimeter of that encampment. Uh, John is positioned uh, on the eastern uh, edge of the encampment uh, across Royce Quad from the perimeter. So uh, not in a position to see that, but we did see the, the security surrounding the entire encampment for much of the day. Uh, and when things turned south here over the past hour, they retreated. But you can see the live picture on the left of your screen, Sky 5. That's the western edge of the encampment. And those are uh, security officers that are in position there. Things are all calm on the west side, as you can see, of, of that encampment. It, the east side is where there's been trouble. And now it looks again as though someone might be down, John. Yeah, Michael, we're looking now, right? I did not see this person get dragged or pulled up here like we did that other guy who was injured. Uh, but yes, yeah, someone appears to be down on the ground. It appears to be someone um, uh, who was not affiliated with the pro-Palestinian encampment, but someone is down and um, some folks are standing around him, tending to him. Uh, we are sort of stationary and locked right here, so we can't physically move closer to him at this minute, but we are trying to zoom in there so you can see um, you can see what's happening there on the ground they are tending to him and it's unclear right now if EMS is on the way if uh, you know they've called for, for for more medical care for someone who appears to be injured here on the ground on the lawn uh, east side of this encampment here at UCLA um, I could see his leg moving so it would appear that he is conscious but um, again we are 
we're, we're going to try to get closer once we toss it back up to Sky 5 or you guys in the studio so we can ask what happened to him. Um, but yeah, someone down on the ground right here. Um, and if it seems like it's illuminated, lit up right now, um, that, that's a big screen that pro-Israeli demonstrators erected earlier. Um, and what they have been showing is uh, video of the October 7th attack and testimony uh, from, from witnesses and survivors. So they have set up their own uh, protest stage here, if you will, uh, and that's where this demonstrator, who was appears not to have been affiliated with the pro-Palestinian camp, uh, is injured, laying here right in front of this, this screen. Still a lot of people over um, by the barricade itself, uh, as the folks here are tending to this one person who's down. Share Micah. And, and John, um, you reported um, earlier uh, in the 10 o'clock uh, hour about um, UCLA declaring the pro-Palestinian encampment illegal for the first time today. Let's talk a little bit about that. That's right. Um, we were hearing from school officials that uh, this has now been unlawful. And we even had students come up and talk to us saying, you know, we, we've gotten emails uh, from the university telling us, you know, not to be close to this thing because uh, it's unlawful and you could face disciplinary, uh, severe disciplinary action or even charges uh, by, you know, misdemeanor charges, things like that, depending on the nature of, of what unfolds. But basically students telling us, students who didn't want anything to do with these demonstrations or the protests who were really just trying to get through um, the end of their semester tell us that, yeah, you know, when asked, what do you think about what you're seeing and, and experiencing here on your college campus? You know, they would say, well, you know, they think it's terrible, but we don't want to get involved. We don't want to get in trouble. And we certainly don't want to be caught up in, in, in any violence that might unfold like it did at USC. Um, and so unlawful, um, an unlawful assembly, if you will, but it's certainly not being enforced by any law enforcement that we see. Uh, so that's not to say that there isn't a plan and police uh, aren't going to do anything, but we're not seeing any uniformed officers on the ground doing anything right now as all of this unrest unfolds here on the campus. Chair Micah. Yeah, and as you hear from UCLA officials uh, declaring this unlawful, that would typically be the first step uh, toward uh, efforts to dismantle and remove the encampment. Uh, keep in mind, unlike USC with finals week, UCLA is on a quarter system, so they still have several weeks of instruction before uh, they're dealing with final exams. So a bit of a different uh, context here uh, with students at UCLA versus what we saw last week uh, on the campus of USC. Uh, but nonetheless, an encampment here that and, uh, and counter protesters tonight uh, coming in and trying to dismantle this encampment what became very frightening uh, and, and tense there, there for a good uh, 45 minutes or so as they were pulling the barriers apart and, and trying to actually get at the protesters, uh, get at the pro-Palestinian encampment protesters there on campus to the point where unarmed security actually retreated and took cover. And they actually got at some of the um, yeah. uh, some of the people that were there. They uh, sprayed bear spray at uh, some of the people, the pro-Palestinian um, protesters that um, were that came outside of the encampment to protect the encampment. And um, we were able to see one person who was doused in that bear spray. He was uh, being treated by uh, EMS, and and they had some eye wash in him, and they were trying to, uh, you know, get the be the bear spray off of him. He was doused and, um, you know, he was treated on scene and then released. Uh, it seemed that there was another as another person as well that um, uh, uh, also Jeff, was closer? attacked by with that bear spray and was blinded by it and fell and hit his head. Um, yeah. And uh, it seems that he was also treated. Um, it, it, he was he was treated as well, wasn't he? Uh, eventually. Uh, we've seen EMS only on the perimeter. They will yeah. not enter a scenario like this without law enforcement uh, escort, and law enforcement is nowhere to be found. Mm. So 
what we did, what we saw was EMS uh, essentially a couple blocks away, right. uh, away from the violence, away from the tension, and it looked as though uh, friends of the person who was injured actually carried him over to EMS, and he was uh, eventually put into an ambulance. But um, you know, an hour ago we saw EMS actually pull right in adjacent to Roy's quad. They had that law enforcement this escort. Guy's, this guy's once, up now. Uh, once they all left. 911 was called again some 20 minutes later for a second victim mm -hmm. uh, and at that point that victim was carried by friends again yeah. uh, to the ambulance which was some distance away from this scene and now we see another person down and it, it looks as though uh, there was some sort of um, pepper spray or bear spray that this person is dealing with based on uh, how he's being treated here and again by friends not by EMS mm -hmm. it looks as though the uh, the effects again are beginning to wane here on on this individual as again fireworks being set off here uh, in the direction of the encampment at least one of them landing smack in the middle of the encampment just a frightening thing to see and the potential for very serious injury or worse yeah. uh, with fireworks going off in an encampment I mean you could be maimed I mean uh, you know death major injuries um, you know it's a good thing that that we're just only seeing two minor injuries at this point um, of the night from, uh, you know, the clashes that um, um, have been going on here at UCLA from um, counter protesters trying to take down this um, solidarity encampment here um, of the pro-Palestinian encampment on, on UCLA's campus, um, you know, but the fireworks that have been lobbed at this encampment have been very worrisome. Um, they, like you said, one smack in the middle that went off uh, and then another one that, uh, you know, we've seen at least half a dozen that have gone off in the last hour. And you only wonder what else is up their sleeve at this point as they gather, um, as you see them there in the um, foreground of your, of your screen and, uh, you know, facing off. And these clashes are very intense. And, um, and, and the, they're all, some, a lot of them are wearing masks, you know, don't wanna be, don't wanna be recognized, right? And, and we've seen them clash with each other where one person was on the ground being kicked um, by you know, three or four other men. Um, you know, that, that lasted for a few seconds and then it, it stopped. But nonetheless, we, we can only imagine that it could get worse as they toss cones, you know, into um, the encampment there and get closer and closer. Um, you wonder uh, what, what's gonna happen next and only hope that maybe perhaps that this could calm down, but it seems that the, the tension is only growing. And the question of whether law enforcement uh, will have a presence here eventually at some point uh, if things continue to escalate. Gil Labus in Sky 5, it looks like another uh, bit of a skirmish here, uh, this time involving traffic cones. Yeah, that's right, Mike and Cher. We, you, you notice that the uh, counter protesters have pushed in again to towards the eastern boundary there. They're even getting very close now, and that's when we see the things being tossed at that point. You saw those cones being thrown at those people multiple times, striking uh, one of the guys at least once in the face. It was not too pleasant to have that happen to him, but uh, as we come out to a wider shot, we'll keep an eye on this, uh, this area now since they're so close to that boundary. It looks like some of them are getting right up into those umbrellas there. Those umbrellas being used to, uh, well, well, now we got a fire extinguisher possibly. Here comes a cone. That's what we're talking about. I mean, those cones are soft, but uh, they carry some weight to them, so it can do some damage. Here comes some uh, fire extinguisher yet again, and items being thrown well over the fence. So as those counter protesters get closer to the boundary, we see this kind of activity. And, the, and you see the umbrellas there again uh, to protect against pepper spray or bear spray that we have seen being deployed here tonight uh, periodically. Uh, we've seen fireworks, uh, roughly a dozen fireworks go off over the past hour or so uh, as these uh, pro-Israeli uh, counter protesters are here trying, uh, they were initially trying to dismantle the pro-Palestinian encampment uh, that has uh, been declared unlawful by 
by the officials at UCLA and a question of how they're going to manage this going forward uh, and how much longer this will be allowed to remain uh, on campus here. We're going to continue to follow this throughout the night on KTLA.com and have the latest developments for you beginning at 4 a.m. on the KTLA Morning News. Good night.